Hi everyone, welcome back to Perfect Smiles with me, Dr. Sarah Sadek, aka Dr. Gum Gums. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing with you an element. We've all heard about it, we're all familiar with it, we've all swallowed it, and dentists will recommend it as a must for good dental hygiene. Can you guess what it is? Did you get it? Yes, the ingredient is fluoride. Fluoride and its link to dentistry is a hugely controversial topic, with even many commendable university professors facing a backlash if they dare to speak up against it. I didn't realise just how controversial fluoride consumption was, and just how strongly people feel about it. There's a real ferocity behind the subject. I really debated with myself about whether or not I should produce this video, but I decided to go ahead for two reasons. Firstly, because I'm a dentist, and at dental school we get taught about the extensive benefits of fluoride, um, whether it's added to our toothpaste, or it's added to our drinking water. And secondly, as I've been looking more extensively into the dental products available on the market, I've noticed there are huge quantities of non-fluoride dental products available. These are mainly available online rather than in the drugstores, but there's still a huge market for them online and it's clear that there's a demand for them. At first, upon seeing these products, I was really shocked and thought, how could anyone sell a tooth cleaning product without containing fluoride? It didn't make any sense. And why are some people so scared of fluoride? So I decided to delve deeper into the actual facts and research to try and understand both sides of the argument a little bit better, which is what I'm going to present to you in this video. Did you know that fluoride is a naturally occurring element? It's present in salt, in milk, and even in water at low levels. By the way, the benefits of fluoride were actually discovered by chance by a dental researcher investigating brown staining present on the teeth of children in a Colorado town in 1909. The research continued and it was found that people suffering from the staining had an unusually high resistance to dental decay. What we now know is that these children were suffering from dental fluorosis, which is caused by the overexposure of fluoride to teeth during the first eight years of life while the teeth are still developing. The research continued and it was later in 1945 that water fluoridation was introduced into the town of Michigan. The children there were monitored for 11 years and it was found that the rate of tooth decay went down by a huge 60%. 10 years later, and after millions of pounds of research, Crest, the company, developed the first toothpaste containing fluoride, and it was hailed a huge success. Later on, England followed the trend, and currently 10% of the UK population will receive fluoridated water. In the US, this figure is currently 70%. So why is it that fluoride is good for our teeth? Now I'll tell you. Studies show that fluoride makes our teeth stronger. It can prevent cavities. It can even reverse early tooth decay. It reduces the amount of plaque that collects on our teeth and also the number of bacteria present so it actually kills bacteria in our mouths. So you get all of these benefits simply by brushing your teeth with a fluoridated toothpaste twice a day for two minutes, which is great. The majority of dentists worldwide will agree that our toothpaste should contain fluoride for the best dental health. So now let's talk about those that aren't so convinced by this research. So some people say that adding fluoride to water is a form of mass medication with no control over the dose, as there's no control over how much water one person will drink in any given day. And also, since 96% of the water supplied is not drunk, um, it's said that that's a waste of 96% of the money that's spent on water fluoridation. And these do seem like fairly valid arguments. Also, fluoride is a toxic substance, and fluoride-containing toothpaste can be toxic. However, they are only toxic if they are swallowed in extremely large quantities. Um, so it varies according to weight, but you'd have to swallow maybe around 100 tubes of toothpaste in a week for it to be toxic. And obviously, this is not what dentists recommend for dental health. Also, some research has been carried out around the health risks of fluoride, but not really enough to draw firm conclusions in relation to its health risks to, to humans. Very high and toxic levels of fluoride have been shown to possibly be linked 
to hip fractures, wrist fractures in the United States, irritable bowel symptoms in Asian populations and possibly kidney injury. So let's go back to the UK and look at the health benefits of water fluoridation here. Studies by Public Health England show that areas of water fluoridation often contain levels of oral disease much less than the national average. Just to briefly explain this, oral disease is measured by decayed, missing and filled teeth. Um, an abbreviation of this is DMFT. The national average DMFT in the UK is 0.94. In areas such as Newcastle, um, which is a fluoridated area, the DMFT was 0.75, which is obviously less than 0.94, which indicates that fluoride does have a beneficial effect on dental health. However, the study by Public Health England also shows that the very best performers in the UK with the smallest DMFT figures in England are towns and cities like Brighton, which has a DMFT of 0.35, Bristol, which has a DMFT of zero, also 0 0.35, and Richmond on Thames, which has a DMFT of 0 0.4. All of these areas actually don't contain fluoridated water. And in Birmingham, which is a city where the whole population of 1 million drinks fluoridated water, the DMFT is 1.17, which again is higher than the national average. So what these figures show is that perhaps other factors are also coming into play. In conclusion, Fluoride, in my opinion, has had a huge influence on improving dental health, and I still believe it's an essential part of maintaining the health of our teeth. However, I would be interested to hear your opinions and experiences that you've had with fluoride, be it in the toothpaste or the water that you drink. Do you live in an area that has fluoridated water? Do you suffer from tooth decay? Please drop me a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your responses and find out a little bit more about your views on water fluoridation. If you found this video interesting or useful, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.